two teams with the richest traditions in the SEC square off in semifinal Saturday. Both Kentucky's Tubby Smith and Arkansas's Nolan Richardson have won college basketball's biggest prize, but today they slug it out for a trip to the SEC's biggest dance. This tournament became much bigger when the Razorbacks came in the league in 92. In 95, Kentucky took more than 40 minutes of hell from Arkansas as the Big Blue won the crown in what since has been dubbed Atlanta. But revenge was sweet for the Hogs in last year's tournament. In a win-or-else mode, Arkansas shot down the Wildcats en route to their first-ever SEC Tournament Championship. The talk is over. Big Blue, Big Red, Arkansas, Kentucky, next. City Madness means Arkansas, Kentucky, semifinal Saturday. It doesn't get any better in the Southeastern Conference when the Razorbacks take on the Wildcats live from the Gaylord Entertainment Center, the final SEC semifinal of the afternoon. Hello, everyone. Tim Brando by my side and ready to go. Joe Dean Jr. And Joe, this is one great matchup, tradition rich in every sense of the word. And when you start talking about star players, the preseason SEC Player of the Year, Joe Johnson, now playing like a Player of the Year, and Tayshawn Prince, who took over this league at midseason, the Player of the Year, will be on display. Now, well, Timmy, two of the best forwards in all of college basketball here on display today. Joe Johnson last night against LSU put the Hogs on his back and took them to victory in the quarterfinals. Driving to the goal, shooting the three, 27 points, six boards, four assists. Joe Johnson lit him up from downtown. He's the straw that stirs the drink for the Hogs. And on the other side, he will be matched by Kentucky's Tayshaun Prince as you take a look at his numbers from last night. The SEC Player of the Year this season, Tayshaun Prince, had a comp in California. Shoots the three at 6'9". He goes inside, gets it done, raises the level of the Wildcats game here today in the semifinals. Obviously, Kentucky comes in, though, Joe. They've been the more consistent team. And last night, were it not for Joe Johnson, LSU would be playing in this game. What does Arkansas have to do to match Kentucky's prowess? Well, Arkansas today has got to rebound better. They were dominated on the boards earlier by Kentucky and Fayetteville. But the key to Arkansas is 40 minutes of hell, 94 minutes of full-court pressure defense. Pressure on Kentucky, pressure on officials. As always, business as usual. When these two get together, it is something special. The 2001 SEC Basketball Tournament is being brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Alltel, the power to simplify. By Comfort Inn, it's more than a rule, it's comfort. By Jefferson Pilot Financial. Complete financial planning and life insurance. We're helping you write the story of your life. By BMW. Visit your local BMW center for a test drive. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. And by Ice House. Ice House style is about making a good time better with the smooth, never watered down taste of Ice House. Nashville packed to capacity at the Gaylord Entertainment Complex. The Big Blue and the Razorbackers are here. And let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by Don Pablos. For Arkansas, Teddy Gibson certainly is another added advantage to your perimeter game. Satchel will be in the middle. Blake Eddins will get the starting call after a quality performance last night. Dean and Joe Johnson. For the Wildcats, Tayshawn Prince is joined by Parker, who's got all the moves in the middle. Gerald Fitch has really played well. Bogans and Saul Smith, a three-guard alignment for Tubby Smith's Cats. We're set, and as we said earlier, this league's tradition based solely in the beginning in basketball in Kentucky, now challenged by Arkansas from the West. Hogs heads are alive and well in Nashville, Tennessee, as they call, oh, Big Suey. 
And the third member of our broadcast team is ready to go. If you look at our series record, Wildcats lead the series 14-7, particularly in tournament play. They have dominated Arkansas, but the Razorbacks, the defending SEC tournament champion. Let's get to the third member of our broadcast team, Dave Baker. Dave? Tim, the Kentucky coaches believe they've got to stop Arkansas from getting easy shots today. When the Hogs won down in Fayetteville, they were able to penetrate the middle and pitch. Kentucky says that they can't let Arkansas do that today. On the other side, the Razorbacks believe they have to make easy shots to get into the press. How much of a factor will fatigue be? We'll have to see. Razorbacks didn't get in bed this morning till almost 1.30 a.m. Central Time. Yeah, that should send a thank you card to John Brady. Brady Gibson gets the first deuce. LSU gave Arkansas much more of a show than they had expected. And why does Blake Eddins get the surprise start today? Off to an assist here on the opening play, the jump ball play. The young man from Montgomery, Alabama with a nice assist. Logan's working on Eddins on the low block, no double team. That's a mismatch right there. Bogan's too physical for Blake Eddins. We'll have to watch that. Oh, what an acrobatic maneuver just to save it by Satchel, but he can't finish it. Don't blink. Bogan's in the air. A little bit of no man's land there. He put Fitch in a bad spot. He knows it. And it's a turnover. Yeah, anytime you leave your feet with that basketball, you better know what you're going to do. Either shoot it or pass it. When you get up there and are indecisive, that's when the turnovers come. Both teams start man-to-man. -man. And both teams, size-wise, match up well. We've got Prince on Joe Johnson. Great matchup with the two All-American candidates. Mono a mano there. And Johnson will draw Prince on the other end most of the afternoon. Dean falling away. Well, this is his stage. Last year's tournament MVP, Brandon Dean. And this style will suit him because it'll be a full court game. Kentucky wants to run and press. Arkansas may do it as well as any team in the country. Logan sees a lane. Dean knocks it out of there. Here's Prince for three. Logan's on the glass as it swatted away in his foul. Well, we, Satchel picks up his first. Well, you talked about Brandon D. Timmy. He loves the SEC stage, the MVP a year ago. Watch him just off the dribble. The strength to rise up over Saul Smith and knock down that medium-range jump shot. Brandon Dean, one of the Louisianians on this team, Washita Parish High School in Monroe, and a uh, very explosive first step. And uh, he, like Johnson, really got in step in late February. Bogans had a career high, 29 last Sunday at Florida, 23 yesterday against South Carolina. Johnson end to end. Well, the preseason player of the year got the better of the regular season player of the year. Just beat Prince to the goal. There are a lot of great finishers in the SEC, guys, that can take it to the goal and make the shot. Joe Johnson may be the least athletic of that bunch, but probably the smartest in knowing how to get to the rim and use his body to make the basket. I talked to Brad Dunn before the game, the able assistant. You see uh, Satchel going into press row over there in front of the scorer's table. I asked uh, Brad Dunn, I said, was that the best performance for Joe Johnson last night? And he said, yes, that was clearly the best performance that Joe Johnson's had all year. Well, they got our Jefferson Pilot sports sign down. and We got to get that back up. We, Dr. Pepper. Signage got, is everything. Doc, Dr. <laughs> Pepper, Dr. Pepper never looks so bad. That's right. <laughs> that signage is in the contract for Dr. Pepper. Got to get it up. Parker in the middle. And a reach-in foul spotted. That will go against Blake Eddins. You know, Timmy, I talked to Mike Anderson, the other assistant, uh, during the first semifinal game today about Joe Johnson and, and asked him, is he as uh, laid back and passive in person as he appears on the floor? And he said, most definitely. That's just his nature, but he's getting more aggressive with age. Dean and Smith. And will go back the other way. I think uh, we have a foul on Saul Smith. Tom Lopes has it. He had the call rather than John Clockerty. I tell you, and that, Tubby Smith doesn't like it at all. Yeah, Tubby, I tell you, if it had gone the other way, Nolan wouldn't have liked it because this could have gone either way. Two guys clearly got to the ball at the same time. You see the shove a little bit by Saul Smith there. That was the call. Nolan happy, Tubby not. Well, remember, it's all about 
creating an advantage. And in Tom Lopes's mind, uh, what happened there, Saul Smith took away right. an advantage to the ball, an angle to the ball that Brandon Dean had. Well, that's always the call, advantage, disadvantage. Brandon Dean may have gotten there just a split second before Saul Smith. Well, it's one of those situations where if uh, the whistle doesn't blow twice, the coach probably doesn't get up. Exactly. The intensity level here, you could just cut it with a knife. The fans are into this game. Two-story basketball program with a lot of interest from their fans. Ditch. Well, we saw, obviously, in Justin Reed in the first semifinal game, the best freshman in this league, but uh, you talk about influence from a freshman. Gerald Fitch has been that for Kentucky this year. Well, when they inserted him into the lineup back on December 22nd at Indiana, as you see the foul there, Gerald Fitch really helped Kentucky take control and go on an eight-game win streak. He's a freshman out of Macon, Georgia. Well, like yesterday, Satchel picks up two very quick fouls. And as you recall, last night they needed a, a bit more of that depth than they had anticipated. Tied at six. Arkansas does not need Satchel on the bench. And Timmy, you mentioned the two quick fouls. He got in foul trouble last night. That's been a problem for him. They need his presence inside. He's a great shot blocker. Eddins, not this time. Tayshawn Prince, the rebound for Kentucky. The point forward, rebound the defensive board and puts it on the break and throw the assist to the big freshman, Jason Parker. Hard for Arkansas to match up with that when Prince is handling out front. No question, you create the high-low and it's 6-9. You can see over the defense, down into the low post, and that gave Jason Parker the easy layup opportunity. Kentucky pressed on the made basket, 2-2-1. Gibson, great ball face. Eddins likes the wing jumper, but did not get set. Turned it down. Johnson, a pull-up. Lane. Alonzo Lane, that's where he gets his offense, off the offensive putbacks. Jason Parker that time went to help on the shooter, Joe Johnson, and he left Alonzo Lane wide open for the offensive board. Look at the high-low. Tayshawn Prince, the great feed at 6'9 to Jason Parker down low. You see it from up top at 6'9. See how you can see over that defense? That's what gives him the good vision to find his partner and throw it away from the defense for the easy lay. Tied at 8. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in Nashville, Southeastern Conference semifinal. Who will play Ole Miss in the championship game? Prince. Loose ball, he stays with it. And his foul going back up. Three rebounds already for Tayshawn. And the foul goes against Blake Eddins. And that's his second. You know, they talk a lot about Tayshawn Prince and his toughness, or maybe his lack of. That's the question mark about him. He has a slender frame, not physically strong, but he kills you with finesse and with smarts. The last six road games that Kentucky has played, Tayshawn Prince has averaged 24 points a game, but in that stretch, the lowest total he had was at Arkansas with 14. So we'll see if he can step up today against the Razorbacks. Their quickness has a tendency to bother him. Well, I think that the stereotype of, uh, of Prince's smooth style sometimes uh, questions intensity. I think that ended when uh, his dad came to see him play for the first time in their home win against Tennessee. At that time, of course, Tennessee was in the top five in the country. Bogans guaranteed a victory, you might recall. Both Bogans and Prince came of age as leaders of this team after that game. That was the first time Tayshawn's dad had ever seen him, and he drove all the way from California to see the game. Brandon Dean hits the tray, and it's 11-10 Razorback. If Brandon Dean shoots well for Arkansas, look out. He has been a streaky shooter. He's two for three already in the ball game, and if he can make shots, that is a bonus for Nolan Richardson's offense. Logan sees the baseline. Well, they collapsed on him. There's Parker. Now, look at the strength, the brute strength of Parker, but he loses it on the way up. On the run out, Dean. Good work defensively by Fitch. What a recovery. I reset the clock off the kick, so there'll be a fresh 35. I got to catch my breath, Timmy. <laughs> Don't blink. We've got a few human blurs on display. These teams are pumped, and so is the crowd. Already four lead changes. Should we be surprised? I don't think so.
11-10, Arkansas with the lead by one. Just underway, the Kentucky fans are out in great number. Family members of uh, some of the players on hand. And don't forget, fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows SEC basketball like JP Sports. We bring information to you online. Tune in each week for our broadcast schedule, affiliate list, previews of upcoming games, conference news, many other exciting features. If you want the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. Arkansas will switch all screens. Good, not there. And as an example, Tayshawn Prince on the screen, and Saul Smith got the, the jump shot opportunity from the top, but Joe Johnson switched that screen and came up at 6'7", 6'8", and contested against the 6'2", Saul Smith. That makes it a tough shot. Kentucky zoning now. It's a matchup. Oh, well, Johnson can bring you out of it because he has the in-between game, Joe. You know, a lot of guys, it's a lost art in the modern-day era. Uh, this guy can hit runners. He can pull up, hit the 10 to 12-footer. He's got it all. Yeah, he, he really does at 6'8". When he gets to the lane, he's so big and has such great touch. He can get it over the defense and has good touch right around that rim. And Prince is there to answer. Now the two marquee players stepping up in the big game here. Prince with a great shot and confidence, playing tremendous down the stretch, earned him the SEC Player of the Year award. Four lead changes, five ties already in this game. Only six minutes deep. Gibson. Now we saw in the first game, in Ole Miss in Florida, we saw a game of runs. Ultimately, Ole Miss, with the final push, won the game and made their way into the SEC Tournament Championship game. Bogan. And there's where the switch hurt Arkansas. They're switching the screens away from the ball, and Bogan's got free because his man left him to go help. Wide open layup, good recognition by Kentucky. Both benches now beginning to empty. And of course, both teams can go very deep into their bench. Arkansas perhaps a bit deeper. Kentucky wanting to slow Arkansas down and make them work a little bit offensively. Baker not there, Johnson the follow. Stays with it, quick off his feet, Joe Johnson. Six in the game for him and a two point. A razorback lead. And that's a big time play on the offensive glass. Just played a little volleyball with it. Stayed after it and got it in. Bogans with the dump down to Parker. He's got all the moves down there. Threw that one up a bit from the hip. Rushed it. And uh, Teddy Gibson brings it out. Alonzo Lane hustled nicely that time to get in position to deflect that shot. Gibson off the feed from Dean. The Louisiana connection. Monroe to Farmerville. 20 to 15. Gibson hasn't missed. He's three out of three. Prince. Good defensive help that time. Alonzo Lane, that's uh, one of his specialties. Got in position, and Prince picks up the player control foul. Teddy Gibson, the nice job of sliding in from the help side and drawing that charge. You see David Hobbs, the former Alabama head coach, talking to Tubby Smith on the sideline. Tayshawn Prince is going to have to be careful right there on the drive. Again, when you see that help coming, got to look to kick it to an open teammate. Arkansas has not turned it over yet. The Big Blue turned it over three times. Arkansas forced 21 turnovers against LSU last night. The defensive intensity was as tough as I think I've seen all year by Arkansas last night. And it was a must. Without it, they're not playing today. Prince, great work. Defensive work underneath. And Cliff Hawkins, the outstanding young star that uh, many believe is the heir apparent for Saul Smith, inside the stone. Cliff Hawkins got trapped 
and had the vision to see through the trap and find Stone open right in the middle of the floor. That's an excellent job by the point guard, Cliff Hawkins. He really brings back memories of uh, Wayne Turner to a lot of the big blue faithful. I can understand why. After having seen him play, outstanding on the defensive end, really creates havoc. Quick hands. Oak Hill Academy, well tutored there. And getting more minutes as the season wears on. Cleveland. Out of bounds, it belongs to the Razorbacks. Not quite nine minutes deep. Tubby Smith giving Tom Lopes an earful. And Joe Johnson giving the basket his own brand of full. Look out. Well, we've had uh, some pretty hog heads, and then, you know, sometimes it's just not a reflection, a true reflection of your true good looks. <laughs> 20 to 17, our score. Well, stay tuned. The Dr. Pepper $1 million shootout takes place at halftime. Michelle Dowdy could become an instant millionaire. And where would Michelle be from, well, uh, Joe? Tim, where else would she be from? Olive Branch, Mississippi, the garden spot of the South. Uh, the Magnolia State should be proud of Miss Dowdy. Yes, ma'am. You think there have been times when they've said, howdy, Miss Dowdy, <laughs> to Michelle? <laughs> 20 you're, to <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> 20 to 17, Razorbacks Kentucky, lead it by three. Kentucky stays in that zone. They're packing in around that lane. Want to get Arkansas to shoot over the top. Kentucky, as we mentioned, dominated the boards in the earlier meeting with Arkansas, 52-37. Argo fouled by Daniels and uh, a cardinal sin, and no, no one wants to hear cardinal in Kentucky these days. Committed <laughs> that time by Eric Daniels, the freshman from Cincinnati. Eric Daniels is an outstanding young player, but Tubby Smith knows that he's got to learn not to make mistakes like that. Fouling a shooter from three-point range is a big-time no-no. Because we, we raised the issue of uh, Cardinal, that's been obviously a major story. I'll be working with Rick Patino next week. Uh, you know, Rick had a chance to visit with Tubby Smith in Gainesville last Sunday. He had come in to see the Florida-Kentucky game. And it's interesting because Tubby Smith has gone on record, Joe, as saying that in some respects it would be healthy uh, for Patino to coach at Louisville. And, uh, you know, there are a num number of reasons, in my opinion, why it does ease some of the tension on Tubby if, uh, if Rick indeed does test the job at Louisville. Well, it clearly puts Tubby as the head of the Kentucky program. No more, you know, could Rick come back, that type of thing, which they had to deal with during the course of the season after he left the Boston Celtics. Well, the Big Blue Faithful would no longer make those comparisons. Exactly. Right. And shouldn't. Tubby Smith yeah. is one of the top coaches in the country. And Hawkins takes it inside to draw the contact from Baker. Arkansas put LSU on the foul line last night 41 times. Their tenacious defense was evident, but the hand check calls were in effect all night last night. Bogans. Got Baker airborne as well as Alonzo Lane. Six players last night for Arkansas actually had four fouls when the game ended. And you see it right now, they're getting Kentucky to that foul line. Bogans with great strength for a 6'4 guard. Muscled up that shot. It's amazing to think that Arkansas has not turned it over as yet. This game has been played very quickly because of that. Bogans needs to get to the line, and, and certainly you feel that uh, Kentucky could bring just athletically, they're more of a half-court defensive basketball team, Joe, but generally speaking, you're going to create turnovers off that, and Arkansas is really protecting the ball. Doing an excellent job. Again, Arkansas, the quicker of the two teams. Kentucky probably the better inside and the better rebounding of the two teams. First turnover for Arkansas. You see the full-court pressure. Cleveland and Hawkins. Great oh, strip. Oh, to Davis. And he's fouled by Hawkins. That's all Cliff could do. I tell you, that was a clean pick. Well, T.J. Cleveland is a great floor leader for Arkansas. Does so many things. He's one of the steals leaders in the SEC. You see him just reach out on the crossover, find Davis on the two-on-one, and the lone senior for the Razorbacks gets to the foul line. That's the one thing, Tim, about these two teams. Both only have one senior on their squad. That man right there, Brandon Davis. And, of course, Saul Smith for Kentucky. 
I mean, you talk about uh, a steal from a guy like Hawkins. Uh, Hawkins is a great ball handler. Yes. I mean, that's one of his specialties. And TJ uh, took him to school. 24-18. Reached the halfway mark of the opening half. Hawkins' dog on the deck. Cargo gets a piece of it. And here come the Razorbacks, and we've got a double technical. Intentional foul intentional right there. Intentional foul, I beg your pardon. Yes. It's intentional, not a double technical. Just intentional against Hawkins. Yes. He reached up and actually grabbed Cleveland after he had been on the deck when the ball was going the other way. Hawkins was struggling with the right-hand dribble, and as he tries to get up, he just grabbed T.J. Cleveland's foot. And that was the call. And Tubby Smith uh, with a very pensive look over that. And Hawkins in a position, I think he's just trying to he's save an easy bucket, yeah. but that was more of a foul of frustration. No question. He, he turned the ball over to Cleveland the play before and then got hung up on the right-hand dribble as he came across half court. Cleveland putting the great pressure on. And as the ball went the other way, Hawkins, in frustration, just grabbed Cleveland's foot. Tom Lopes, the official, was right on the call. Well, and that's one of the reasons why critics of uh, Saul Smith, you know, you talk about that kind of frustration. He's still a young player. You know, the critics of uh, Saul Smith need to be silenced. Because those kinds of fouls are freshman fouls. This is his first SEC tournament uh, for Cliff Hawkins. As good as he is, uh, Wisdom will come for that young man in time. Well, the people that have criticized Saul Smith don't know much about basketball because Saul Smith is one of the guttiest, toughest players in this league. Defends, handles the ball, runs the offense, and will make open shots. And is more tolerant than most grown men. Bogans, look at that tough drive to the basket. Stone can't handle the pass. Hands of Stone right there. Bogans with the good look. Maybe a little bit too crisp. Marvin Stone out of Huntsville Grissom High School. Couldn't make the play. He runs the floor well. That's perhaps uh, his greatest asset as a big man. He's not real athletic as a 6'9 player, Marvin Stone. More of a finesse player. Passes well, smart, knows how to play. Was well coached in high school by Ronnie Stapler, who's here today to watch his protege. Lane. Good find to Cleveland. Off the front iron, Lane trying to run it down. Out of bounds again. His hustle play allows Arkansas another attempt. Alonzo Lane. Much